But utilities have been telling us that the public side, the side that they're in control of, is also um, a very big concern of theirs. Probably one half to two thirds of utilities that I talk to also need this service on the public side because the records um, aren't as good as, as, you know, as they should be. Hey there, welcome back to Water Finance Management Conversations. Today we're going to jump right back into the lead service line discussion and we're going to discuss validating lead pipe materials. And joining me, I have Dave Johnston, Director of Smart Infrastructure at Mueller. And Dave joined us on an earlier conversation this year to talk about this very topic, so it's great to have him back. And Dave, before I bring you into the discussion here, I just want to set the table a little bit. Now, I'll, I'll spare our audience the, spe the specifics on the lead and copper rule requirements. Uh, we've got the deadline uh, coming up in October of 2024 to get uh, lead pipe inventories created. Um, and, and I think most everybody who works uh, in the sector, at least on the drinking water side, is, is sort of aware of the requirements with that. So I won't I won't get into that, but I do want to discuss uh, the field validation aspect today. Field validation of historical records is required uh, in, in for inventories. And when it comes to field validation, Dave, I, I want to talk about how utilities are approaching this. Are, are they looking towards standard methods, standard technologies, or are, are they looking for new methods, new, new technologies specifically geared toward locating lead? Talk to us about how you, you're seeing utilities uh, approach this. Yeah, uh, thanks, Andrew. And um, I, I've talked to many, many different utilities about this over the last you know, six, eight, eight months. And, and, and a lot of them are, they're looking for ways to break away from the, the sort of standard method of validation and try to find something easier and, and more accurate. Um, and the standard right now is essentially visual identification of what the pipe material is. And if you're, if you're outside the home, that requires an excavation first, which is quite costly and quite, quite intrusive. Um, and if you're inside the home, luckily, it, you know, hopefully if there's a basement, you can, you can get eyes on the pipe uh, quite, quite easily. But both of those methods have have limitations to them. Um, even inside the home, when it's easy to to actually get access and see the pipe itself, there are there are definitely occurrences and examples that we've seen where the pipe transitions from one material to another um, in the foundation or just outside the foundation of the home. So the visual identification at that point is not an accurate representation of what the actual pipe material is. So there's a lot of limitations to, to the current traditional approaches and utilities are, are looking for ways to, to be more accurate um, and also to, to reduce, reduce cost um, and, and intrusiveness. And so, um, so yeah, it's a challenge for many utilities and, uh, and, you know, anytime that we talk to them, they're very interested in, in, in alternatives. Yes. And so with that, let's get a little bit into Mueller's pipe screen service line analyzer, which is a new tool that Mueller has been working on in this space. So Dave, give us the overview of how it works, how invasive it is. Uh, does it require any digging to validate, uh, digging to, to, to set sensors? Um, I'm sure these are all questions that you've been getting. Sure. So, uh, so the new tool, pipe screen service line analyzer, is a completely non-intrusive, non-destructive, no modification to the pipe is required to deploy the tool itself and do a test of the service line. Um, it's an acoustic-based tool that uh, that has been um, built off of uh, generations of acoustic products that Mueller has in its portfolio. Um, and, uh, and the way that it works is we set up two acoustic sensors on, on the pipeline. And so typically this would be um, you know, one example of an orientation is where we put one sensor on a corporation valve um, at the at the property boundary and one sensor uh, inside the home at uh, at where the pipe uh, comes out of the foundation of the wall. And we run a test and that test reveals what the dominant pipe material is between those two sensor points. Um, very easy to deploy. Like I said, there's no modification needed. These are these are vibration sensors or acoustic sensors. They attach magnetically to pipe fittings. Um, 
and uh, and the recording is done onto a laptop, and uh, the analysis is all the analysis and final classification is done um, up in in the cloud. Uh, and and to to dive into a, a little bit how you know the physics and the how it technically works, we're looking at the acoustic properties of the pipeline, and those properties are dependent on what the material type is. And we, we look at a variety of, of different properties. Um, and I'll give you an example of, of one of them. One of, the, one of the properties we look at is actually how fast sound travels down the pipeline. Um, and that speed of sound is, is um, related directly to what the, the pipeline material is. And so, um, so just as an example, we know that the speed of sound in a three quarter inch copper pipe is about 4,000 feet per second. So it's pretty fast. Um, and in a in a the equivalent diameter lead pipe, it's actually about three thousand feet per second, and so that's one of the many different properties that we look at that allows us to classify that pipe material accurately. As this tool was in development, uh, what what challenges would you say you were looking to address? Was it just speed and accuracy, or just private side inventory, making that process more efficient? Uh, what, what were some of the goals, Dave? Yeah, I mean, you know what, I, all of the above to to a certain extent. Uh, you know, when we were we first started talking to utilities, it was the main thing was to to sort of eliminate the intrusiveness of of having to do an excavation. Excavations today, even if you use a vacuum excavation truck, which is sort of the best and least intrusive method to to expose the surface of a pipe, it's still a large machine that's on site. It's still, you know, got a got a park relatively you know, close to somebody's front yard and there's gardens in the way and there's fences and there's decorative items. There's all these things that can be damaged um, that, that is owned by the, 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 the homeowner there. And so that, that was probably, probably the main thing. We've also heard, um, you know, obviously accuracy of the whole program is very important, not just the method itself. But if we think of this as, you know, it's very important for utilities to, to drive towards replacing the right pipes. Um, and that, that, that's the goal sitting on top of all of these different variables that, that they're working through to identify which are the right pipes. And, and, you know, you would think that that's mainly to reduce cost of the program, but uh, I've spoken to some utilities and they're just trying to reduce the sort of administrative burden of planning out a construction project associated with replacing every single one of these service lines. And so the, the direct cost is important, but just the, the level of effort that a utility has to put towards this um, is something that, that they're trying to reduce too. Initially, our focus was on the private side of the service connection, um, you know, where the, the homeowner is, uh, is is technically owns that service and it is part, you know, the LCRR mandates that this is part of the inventory program. But utilities have been telling us that the public side, the side that they're in control of is also um, a very big concern of theirs. Probably one half to two thirds of utilities that I talk to also need this service on the public side because the records um, aren't as good as, as, you know, as they should be. Final question for you, Dave. Uh, you know, water utilities, uh, lead service line, uh, pipe inventories and replacement programs, you know, this is likely going to be a, a top priority, of course, as we move into to next year, as I mentioned, the October deadline next year. So we're going to, you know, we're going to be getting close to that deadline. Uh, there's going to be probably even more talk uh, about this kind of work. Um, any concluding thoughts that you want to leave us with on, on uh, Mueller's pipe screen service line analyzer or just sort of uh, lead locating in, in general and, and what you expect to see next year? Yeah, well, well, I'll say from the Mueller perspective, we are continuing to ramp up our activities around supporting this, this initiative for utilities. And so we're trying to get ourselves in a position where with this tool and with just our, our understanding of the needs of utilities um, and, uh, and the sort of network of partners that we're building around this, we're trying to position ourselves to really put ourselves in a, in a spot where we can help utilities achieve these these goals because we know it's going to be a challenge and uh you know we, we think we this tool itself we think is an excellent option for utilities to to use to to help increase the accuracy of their program and sort of minimize minimize cost and minimize risk um and so you know we're, 
we we hope to uh, we hope to be there when utilities put their hands up and say, hey, we we need some help. Dave, it's been a pleasure talking to you for a few minutes. Of course, this is one of the 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 most pressing issues I think in the industry. Certainly, one of the most talked about. Um, there's going to be a lot going on next year, I think, as we get closer to the deadline. As as you mentioned uh, earlier, I, I can only imagine the, uh, the the amount of conversations that you've had similar to this, uh, uh, addressing these similar questions uh, on everything to do with with lead service line replacement and lead lead pipe locating. Um, so it's been it's been a pleasure chatting with you for a little bit. Thanks for joining us. Excellent. Thanks, Andrew. And with that. We'll see you all next time on the next edition of Water Finance Management Conversations. See you then. Subscribe to Water Finance and Management's YouTube page and visit waterfm.com for the latest water industry news and insight.